This is Dr. Andrew Jones. In this edition of NRE Secrets, I'm going to show you how to tell if your dog has bloat. Bloat is one of the most serious health conditions that can affect your dog. So it's really important that you understand what it is, um, what you can do to prevent it, the clinical signs associated with it, so you can quickly recognize that potentially bloat is happening within your dog, and then you're taking the appropriate emergency action. One of the big things I want to stress with you guys is just how quickly this can happen. When the stomach dilates, it twists, it, the stomach loses its blood supply, you get all those serious secondary signs of shock, including potentially even cardiac changes. I mean, it happens so, so quick. You really need to be on it in terms of recognizing this is what my dog has, and then immediately going to your veterinarian. Bloat itself, it's most often seen in our large, deep-chested dogs, you know, such as my dog, Lewis here. So when we're looking at the breed, we know the Great Dane is the number one breed, um, but just thinking of the other deep-chested do dogs, um, St. Bernard's, Weimaraners, Dobermans, German Shepherds, Obviously, it can, it can occur in any dog and in, in any size, but typically we're, we're looking at our large dogs, sort of 90 pounds and up. They've got these deep, deep chests. In terms of describing to you what bloat is, so what's happening is your dog's stomach is first is distending with air, and so that's called the dilation. And then in some cases, it's also twist, and that's called the volvulus or torsion. So that's why it's known as GDV, gastric dilation and volvulus. The first thing I want you to do is then just look at these next two slides. One is showing an x-ray. We've got a quite air-filled distended stomach, which is what you often see um, involving an x-ray and bloat. And the second one is actually showing you the anatomy of there's a normal stomach sitting in your dog's belly, and then how it looks like when it dilates and then twists. So when the stomach dilates and then twists, I mean, a couple of big things are happening here. Um, First of all, what's happening is we're affecting blood flow, so the blood supply to the stomach can get cut off. Secondarily, that dilation and then that twisting can compress a big vein called the caudal vena cava. And in doing so, that is then further restricting blood flow to all the rest of the abdominal organs. So as you can see, pretty quickly, your dog can progress from, I'm feeling a little bit upset, a bit of a painful stomach with gas distension, it's an acute life-threatening emergency and that can immediately lead to signs of shock. So some of the things that you can look for and some of the things that I saw in veterinary practice. Um, this would be a client who initially have had their dog. Pretty typically, it's following a meal. Um, usually it's a dry kibble meal. Um, the client maybe even added a bit of moisture. That seems to be one of the increased risk, factor that risk factors. They've added water to that kibble. Um, Sometimes it's been associated with exercise right after eating that dry kibble. And regardless, what's happened is, is as you can imagine, I mean, all that kibble's sitting there in the stomach, it's produced all this gas and brought in fluid to help break it up. And that's caused the stomach to really distend quite rapidly. That gas isn't able to, to escape, and in some cases, then it twists. So some of the clinical signs I mean, clients would report and what you'd expect to see is your dog is all of a sudden He's slowing down, he's not moving much. It appears he might be actually hunched, you know, where his belly seems sore. And pretty typically, you're gonna actually feel, I mean, this is Lewis's abdominal belly, here's abdominal wall here, just in behind his rib cage where his diaphragm sits, it sticks out, it's quite distended. I mean, you've got this, his entire abdomen is really distended because his stomach is completely filled with air. Um, some pet owners report that it feels like a drum, you know, you'd hit on it, it just feels like a drum. And that's what you see in bloat, this big, fully distended abdomen. Um, Same so the other bigger things and signs that point towards um, where the stomach is maybe even twisted. I mean, that's an immediate emergency, you need to get into a veterinarian you know, as soon as possible. That's where these, these dogs all of a sudden, right after eating, they start to vomit, repeatedly vomit, they're not stopped vomiting, and they're retching and nothing is coming up. Because as you can imagine, that stomach is twisted, it's twisted the, the esophagus, nothing's able to come up. There's this repeated vomiting. Um, their heart rate can go up. Their gums can become either pale or sort of grayish. I mean, clinical signs that we're all often seeing in relating to shock. They're gonna be drooling. Um, signs related to abdominal pain. But it's very painful, it happens all of a sudden, you see this really big distended abdomen, 
they're sort of hunched over. All those signs sort of, anytime you're gonna see all those different clinical signs in that picture, especially it's happened all of a sudden, you really need to be thinking of bloat and you need to be having immediate emergency veterinary care. So some of the big risk factors that seem to be correlated with the increased likelihood of your dog bloating is obviously one, they're exclusively eating a dry kibble. Um, in particular, you're looking at a dry kibble where it's got animal fat as one of the first four ingredients, uh, where animal protein is much lower down on the ingredient list. It seems to be increased if the food is fed elevated, where they're, you know, they're eating their kibble up, up high, like up on a table. Um, if you're adding moist water to that kibble, that seems to in increase the risk of bloat. Um, there seems to be, obviously, if there's a genetic correlation, so if it's within, there's been a history of bloat within, say, for instance, um, um, in your dog's family, then that increases the likelihood of your dog bloating. Obviously, we talked about earlier, these big, deep-chested, large-breed dogs have a higher incidence of bloat. Um, and obviously, there seems to be a correlation. Um, either one, if you restrict water before or after, immediately after eating, and if you're feeding like just one big meal, it's far, far better to break it up. So you're just going to feed multiple uh, meals throughout the day as opposed to, you know, one big, big serving of kibble. But some of the things that seem to decrease the likelihood of your dog bloating um, are one, if, if you are feeding kibble, you're looking at animal protein as one of the first four ingredients. Animal fat way further down on the ingredient list. Um, if you're looking at feeding in, you know, uh, just people food, so what they talk about where, you know, in the past we said, don't feed this stuff, don't be making your dog's home diet. Far lower incidence of bloat for dogs that are in homemade diets. For dogs that eat canned food, um, I didn't see any studies on it, but I suspect similar for dogs that are eating raw food. And it's that, that dry kibble which seems to be the biggest correlation of all, of all the different things. So two specific things then to think of. One, you could look at just some gentle exercise, you know, get your dog outside, walk him on a leash, Get them moving. I mean, it's something um, we're always talking about for colic and horses. Getting that horse walking moving. Get your dog walking and moving. Because in doing so, we're getting that you know, food that's within that stomach to start moving its way through the stomach, out of the stomach, into the intestinal tract, which is what we want. We want that food, that fluid, that air to start moving its way through. So just gentle exercise and walk, moving your dog, walking your dog around, that will help. The second thing um, there is an over-the-counter product called Mylanta. It's a liquid antacid. It, it has an ingredient in it that in some cases will help break down some of those air bubbles and potentially decrease the amount of air that's within your dog's stomach and potentially decrease the likelihood of it then progressing to a serious bloat. Um, so you're looking at a Mylanta dose of about one tablespoon per 10 pounds of body weight. Um, so you know something like Lewis, he's 90 pounds, beginning nine tablespoons. And that would only be in the early stages. His stomach seems slightly distended. He's okay otherwise. He's not vomiting. He doesn't have all those other associated clinical signs that we talked about. Thanks again for watching this video. I just want to reiterate the one big thing. It is a really serious emergency. You know, of all the range of emergencies in veterinary practice, you know, when I was a new graduate, this is the one that I was feared the most, like bloat. Such a serious, serious emergency. Um, first, that you as a pet owner, that you are able to recognize those clinical signs. You know, so acute, a sudden onset of stomach pain. Your dog is sort of hunched up, this big distended abdomen. He's drooling, he's nauseous, he's potentially repeatedly trying to vomit and nothing's coming out. Big, big, the big warning light should go off. I think my dog, dog has bloat. Thank you for watching this edition of Veterinary Secrets. What I want you to do now is first click that link in the box above. That can subscribe you to my channel and you can go ahead and click that link in the box below and I can send you my free books and videos on how to heal your dogs at home with my top natural remedies.